Greetings to Bernadai friends and family. Today I'd like to share with you on the topic of a new humanity. Now the early church, the one we read about in the books of Acts through to Revelation was a mixture of cultures and social classes and ethnic standings. On the one hand you had the Greek culture which had already passed its heyday but had contributed tremendously towards the arts and the early forms of science in the 300 to 400 years leading up to Jesus' coming in a human form. And yet despite its contribution, this Greek culture also brought with it a variety of false gods like Zeus, Ares and Apollo. And on the other hand, you had the Roman culture that came after the Greeks and who were at the time of the early church the rulers of much of the known world. They also contributed tremendously with their brilliant political and judiciary systems, but also brought with them weird religious ideas such as worshipping the Caesars as divine. And in between these two world powers, you found a variety of people, groups and cultures and religions that all contributed to the world in which the early church was founded. Now, one of the great challenges facing the earliest church was the puzzle of ordinary people in the street. Ordinary people in the towns and cities asking who are these people. They are using this term Christos or Christ or Christians, but what exactly are they? Are they a new religion? And the answer was, well, no, not really. Religions were things with temples and priesthoods and sacrifices and weird practices. But the early Christians didn't do those stuff. Are they an ethnic group like the Jews? Well, no, they seem to be talking as if they're some sort of Jewish people, but most of them are not Jews. Most of them are Gentiles like the rest of us. And are they, uh, are they a particular social elite? The answer is absolutely not. They are slaves and free alike. They are men and women alike. They are from all different social and ethnic backgrounds. So what are they? Are they a political group? And if so, are they dangerous? Are they likely to be a problem? Should they be stopped? So when Paul is writing his letters that we find all over the New Testament, he's constantly advising people how to live in a difficult environment, an environment where there is no set pattern for what exactly the church is. Those of us who grew up in a Christian country or a Christian household find it easy to go to church. People know what a church is even if they don't go to one and it's actually quite difficult for the church in the modern western world to recapture what it must have been like to be a movement that wasn't actually a religion in the terms of the day and wasn't an ethnic group and wasn't a social group and so on. And although this new group wasn't a political group, they did form a new community, a new humanity, a new kingdom with a different king than the ruler of the day, but not one that existed to rebel against the political groups that were in control at any given point in time. One of the clearest instructions of this new movement's king has written down in Matthew 5 verse 16 were as follows. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, this new community focused on bringing light into a dark world, on bringing flavor to an otherwise bland society. The Christians faced a unique challenge, particularly in the Roman world. The Romans were very suspicious of any group 
Wherever people met together in too big a group, the authorities were suspicious, uh, wondering whether they were planning some kind of revolution. And with good reason also, since there had been quite a few revolutions and uprisings during the time of the Roman rule, both before and after Jesus' time on earth. And in particular, the early Christians were under threat because they didn't conform to normal social customs. They didn't join in with the religious processions, with the sacrifices and with the things that were done to honor the Roman Emperor. But they did talk about Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And it is in this context that Paul writes to Titus, who found himself on the island of Crete. Now the people were suspicious. The rulers of the Roman Empire wondered if these new people, this new humanity that had formed, were going to rebel and cause another upheaval. So the basic command that Paul gives to believers, to the church, is that they should be subject to rulers and authorities and obedient, ready for every good work. Read with me in Titus 3, verse 1 to 2. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. You see, this is what the church, what early believers were supposed to look like, like new people, different people. In a world where most people wanted to rebel and do evil, we as believers are to be the ones who easily submit to authority, the ones who always want to do good to others. Christians, you and I, are to be people who are known to be good team players and good workplace players and the sort of people you'd like to have beside you in a moment of crisis or difficulty. The sort of people you'd be very happy to hire as an employee. The sort of people you'd be happy to work for because you know a Christian boss will treat you well. Perhaps you are thinking to yourself, yes, but the rulers and the authorities are corrupt and they do what is wrong. I refuse to submit myself to their authority. Well, many of the early Christians probably also thought the same thing. They kept pointing out the mistakes and the shortcomings of those who governed over them as possible reasons to perhaps stage a rebellion and not submit. But Paul's advice to them in Titus 3 verse 3 is still relevant to you and I today. Let's read. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Paul reminds us that we too were at one time evil and doing the wrong things. Before you and I became believers through being born again, before Jesus took up his rightful place as Lord in our lives, we did sinful and shameful things, just like those who are currently unbelievers. But that was the old man. That's how we used to be. We are no longer like that. You and I are now a new type of people, a new and a different humanity. And to submit to the authorities doesn't mean you aren't allowed to differ from them. No, on the contrary, I believe that the church has to refuse to go along with what is wrong. We have to show and live and behave in a better way. But to be a Christian in society means I don't always complain about the government. I don't try and evade taxes or whatever, but rather I take time to pray for my government. Christians, you and I, this new humanity, need to be the type of people that others enjoy being around and having around them. People who don't speak evil of others and who aren't always looking for a fight. <laughs> people who aren't always looking out for themselves only and their own interests but people who are good 
and people who do good, people with whom you'd like to drink a cup of coffee, people you want to have as your friends. And now, from verse 4 to 8, we find the key to how all of this new humanity, this being a new God-honoring person rather than a selfish, evil individual comes to pass. You see, the gospel empowers us to live transformed lives. Read with me from verse 4 to 8. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Now, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. God Himself redeemed us and set us free. He came to rescue us from the evil people that we used to be, from the, the influence of sin and Satan. And the way He does this is firstly, according to the scripture, by the washing of the rebirth, a specific once-off occurrence, but then also the continuous renewal by the Holy Spirit. The change that God's Spirit works in us, the transformation is that we become the people who want to do good, who want to do God's will. We want to do good deeds. We, we want to do the right things. We want to be the light to the world, not in our own strength, but because of the inner working power of God's Spirit in our lives. These few verses summarize the whole gospel message. And I want to encourage you to go and read them a couple of times this week so it sinks in. One theologian writes the following regarding these verses. He says, The gospel is meant to rehumanize us, to make us better people, people who will demonstrate the saving, transformative love of God in who we are and in what we do. People who demonstrate the saving, transformative love of God by who we are and what we do. You see, people often assume that living as new people, this new humanity, means just being involved with spiritual things such as church services or Bible studies or small groups. And, and yes, these things are extremely important. But in these verses, Paul implores Christians, you and I, to be of service to the community. Believers should be busy doing things that are good and profitable to the community and the people around them. Maybe by mowing my neighbor's lawn or going shopping for an elderly couple during this um, COVID-19 lockdown, maybe looking after a difficult baby for a few hours so a young mother can get some much needed rest. Maybe by doing these things we'll make a bigger difference in our society than by just praying and then living however we see fit. We need to live a new humanity type of lifestyle where we do good because of the good that has been done to us by God. In so doing it, we make the goodness of God and His love for people visible to those around us. And in, in doing this, we might just influence some people to experience Jesus, to become followers of Jesus as well. In this way, we help people experience this new humanity that came about, not due to a political or social group, but because of Jesus himself. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have made us into a new humanity, a humanity that does not rebel against you or against authorities or government, but rather a humanity that brings light and hope and flavor 
to an otherwise broken and messed up world. Lord, this morning I firstly want to pray and, and ask you to help us to live like new humans, new people, people made new by your power, people who bring about change in the lives of others. And this morning, if you are not yet a believer, if you're watching this video and, and you say to yourself, well, I'm not sure that I am part of this new humanity, uh, as we read, we need to be born again, first of all. And you say, I have not been born again that I know of. Or I, maybe, maybe I've become lukewarm and I'm not serving Christ as I should. I want to pray with you this morning as well and give you an opportunity to um, give your life to Christ. If that is you, just pray these words out loud after me. Father in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning I declare and admit that I am a sinner and that I need your forgiveness. Lord, I ask that you will forgive me of my sins and all my wrongdoings, the evil ways that I've been living. Forgive me for that. And this morning, Lord, I declare that Jesus is the Son of God. And I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life and to be the King and the ruler of my life. I give you my life. I surrender myself to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will empower and renew me each and every day to live like a new human to your glory in jesus name amen and amen god bless you thank you for this amazing time that i got to spend with you keep well